Good morning, everybody. It is May 23rd. I am back on the Mount Olympus Trail connecting to the Bonneville Shoreline Trail, and I'm gonna show you some guys some new native species today, and maybe some non native ones as well. We'll see. Got a lot more ones we can find this time of year, so let's get started. Look at this wonderful sight here. We got Rosa Woodsii, the native rose species we have in bloom, and there's a nice little bee on it. Wonderful. Of course, there's a lot of introduced rose species, some of which are quite invasive, but thankfully most of the ones here do seem to be Rosa Woodsii, which is, as I said, native. I can see here all the uh, gamble oak and also the uh, big tooth maple have all finally gotten leafed out and are, yeah, this whole place, which I've, almost every video I've made over here so far has been the trees leafless and bare. It's now finally green. And it's just really wonderful. It feels great to be in May, finally. Got another good native species. This is Circium neomexicanum, the New Mexico thistle. It's one of the few thistles you'll commonly see. Uh, native to this region, there's a ton of invasive thistle species that are much more common than all the native ones, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, here it is. It's developing, it's, it's growing out its uh, stalk. Although it's not quite yet in bloom, there's the uh, bits that will eventually become the flower in a few more weeks or so. Nice. So I'm back now at that short forest. Some of you guys might remember from my previous video coming up here where all the trees were, at that point in time, not yet leafing out, so it's all brown looking. And uh, here you can see the uh, balsamo rise of Sagittata again. These ones, it seems, starting to finish up blooming. See the petals are starting to fall off. But now, in its place, another similar species is starting to appear. This one is Biafia amplexicalis, known as the northern mule's ear. It's got a flower that looks extremely similar, as you can see right now. This is like it's really, and they are closely related to the uh, Yifias and Balsamo Rises, but there's a big difference between the two. And uh, that is that the Yifias, Yifias they have what's known as calling leaves. So you can see there's a flower stalk right there, and they have these big leaves growing on them. Leaves that grow on the flower stalk are known as calling leaves, while the uh, Yifia, the Balsamo Rises don't have those leaves. They only have basal leaves, or actually they might have a few really small um, leaves on the flower stalk. See here also the plant is distinguishable from balsamo rice because the leaves are, are a different shape and they're green. They um, don't have any of the hairs that make the other one look whitish or like a light bluish color. Now I am back in the forested part of this trail. It's on the uh, north side of Mount Olympus so it gets less sunlight and less water evaporates. And we get this lovely forest as you can see right here. But anyways, I'm coming back to try and find this one plant I couldn't identify last time because I didn't have any leaves. And uh, it's coming up here. It was this one. You can see all these mostly bare stems, but they have some leaves growing back on them now. Like right here. This all throughout, and seeing the leaves now, it's almost immediately obvious what it is. It's Rubus parviflorus, also known as the thimbleberry. It's a relative of the raspberry and blackberry, uh, without a doubt, native one. Oh, the fair yeah. Raspberries that we like to eat, that's another native species here, actually. I mean, it's native to Europe as well, but it is native to the Inner Mountain West. Anyways, though, it's, uh, yeah, it produces an edible berry and produces these very um, atypical for the raspberry genus sort of leaves right here. There you go, see that? It's like, um, let me really quick. Yeah, instead of being like a segmented and a, a compound leaf, it's just sort of a big palmately veined sort of thing, almost a little bit like a maple leaf. Yeah, and they, I think they tend to grow around wetland areas, which would be why they are growing here, and I, I certainly see them in sort of disturbed areas in the middle of the forest, so... Yeah, there you go. Thimbleberry. Hey, you want to see a nice close-up of the leaves here? Yeah, this is a plant I definitely want to try and taste for you guys, and maybe give a review on, like a species profile. And, uh, this is for you foragers out there. It is definitely kind of tasty, I think, although it's, it has a weird sort of, sh uh, like, a shock to mouth feel. Like, it's tart, but also kind of, like, shocks your mouth a bit when you eat it. It's hard to explain without actually trying it, but uh, not exactly unpleasant. In fact, I thought it was probably one of the tastiest um, berries I actually tried last year from the woods. Also, this is a uh, Amelanchier species back there. Uh, probably Alnifolia, but I'm not going to get Alnifolia, so I'm not going to get close enough to check it out, but I'll have to walk from that brush. And it looks 
a bit unstable down there. So yeah, let's just assume it's the Amelanchia alnifolia Saskatoon service berry. Got to run really quick. This is Pensman cyanthus. Now, Pensman is a genus in the family Plantagenaceae, uh, formerly in Scrophulariaceae before that family was completely blown apart, and you'll still find some guidebooks that place it in Scrophulariaceae just for simplicity's sake. But uh, anyways, it's found primarily the Pensamins in Western North America, although some find it way into uh, um, Central America and the Eastern United States. Now, as for its characteristics, you can see it's got these fused petals right there. And um, it's got opposite leaves usually, as you can see right there. Yeah, opposite leaves. And uh, for the genus as a whole though, one of the most important characteristics is that it's got what's known as a staminode, which is basically a sterile stamen, when it doesn't have an anther, so it doesn't produce any pollen at all. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. Really, it's a pretty huge genre of like a couple hundred species, uh, a lot of which are found in Utah. So uh, I do like them a lot as I like all plants around here, but that's one I especially like, I think. Oh, hey, there's the uh, Rocky Meadow. Let's check that out again. Well, I've uh, found that Rocky Meadow again. It looks quite different now that all the trees are in leaf, and there's also quite a bit of that Wyethia and Plexicalis coming up, but the main thing I want to show right here is this guy. This is a species of Toxicoscordia, and that was the lily-looking thing that I didn't get guess was a Toxicoscordian. I'm not sure if it's Venenosum or uh, Paniculatum, but, um, or else I feel pretty proud I was able to guess that plant just from when it was just barely coming up and was like a tiny little shoot. I think that's pretty impressive. Or are setting up my botany skills, at least a little bit, right? Cool plant all around, very toxic, as I've said each time I brought it up, so uh, don't forage it, don't do anything with it, don't even look at it. Well, you can look at it if you want to. And uh, yeah, not a whole lot of stuff different here, but there's just a ton of the, um, of the uh, Waifia coming up, so. Yeah, it's just another example of how the environment of a place can change in appearance throughout the, uh, throughout the year. Okay, here's something that's quite pleasant to see. This is Dalmatian toad flax, this plant that you got right here. That itself isn't a pleasant part to see though. It's a plant I kind of hate because it's invasive, but you can see if I zoom in just right, there are these like bugs on the plant and that's a species of weevil that's used to biocontrol this plant. It's a, a host specific parasite of Dalmatian toad flax so it only ever affects this plant. And it basically drills holes into the stem which uh, and saps energy from the plant. It basically makes its growth a lot harder and slower so it doesn't spread as fast and makes manual control much easier. So I, I do like seeing that there. Hard to see. And that's what the plant looks like as a whole. Again, pretty terrible invasive one you see quite a lot throughout this area of the Wasatch and the foothills. But one that thankfully does have a pretty convenient biocontrol source. Got a heady sarum boreali right there. Or a boreal sweet vetch, species I showed in a previous video of mine, but uh, yeah, classic member of the pea family. Just growing out in the rocks right there. Got another one right here, this is Facilia linearis, it's a member of the family Baraginaceae. Uh, Facilia is a pretty important genera out west with a lot of species, and uh, I didn't actually know, know what it was, I had to use seek to find us out, I'm sorry to admit that, but it's just true. And uh, my opinion about it, it was a member of the family Hydrophyllaceae formerly, just like the uh, Hydrophyllum was before it was realized that that entire family was actually subset within Baraginaceae, so we just, just transferred them all to Baraginaceae. Anyways, it's um, Linearis, it's got the um, long linear lease, which you can sort of see right there, like that one over there. Yeah, cool plant, I only just learned about it today, and it's uh, quite common here. Also, really quick, there's these um, those flowers right there you see, that's the alium flower. I showed you some alium in a previous video that was not in bloom yet. It just had a little bulb thing at the top, but when it opens up, this is what it looked like. It's more of the family Amaryllidaceae. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure I can tell what family or species in particular this one is, but it's, uh, there you go. It's an onion flower, native wild onion. Most of the invasive species you see around here do seem to be the uh, grasses and the uh, occasional flower like that Dalmatian toad flax. 
but uh, all the trees are native, almost all of them at least. I think I saw one black lotus back on the trail, unfortunately. Yeah, hopefully someone takes care of that. But um, yeah, and then most of the wildflowers will be native, ex except for a few. So that's um, I think that's a positive thing to see. Oh, hey, is there one of the rose at Woodsy Eye blossoms? Oh, how adorable! We're not too pleasant one right here. This is Cynoglossum officinale, the hound's tongue. It's a member of Boraginaceae that is invasive, and it makes these really annoying. Um, seeds called beggar sticks that just stick to your clothes and that's how they distribute themselves They just stick to stuff like clothes or animal fur and they eventually will fall off and spread somewhere far away Yeah, God, I really hate this plant so I'm gonna dig that to it Seeing these things on a trail without knowing at all what they are until it finally hit me that they must be the Erythronium grandiflorum after it's done flowering Its petals have fallen off so now it's just developing its fruit which is a type of capsule That's basically a fruit where the it just enlarges, opens up, and lets the seeds fall out. Nothing that special. It doesn't get eaten by animals, usually. So yeah, and you can see the stalk, and it leads down to the leaves right there. Okay? Yeah, so it's still, although it's sunflowering, it's still using its leaves to absorb energy to um, store later on and power its next flowering event. Look at this. The um, sink, as I showed last time, have gotten quite big. I've got my foot now. Yeah, in about a month or two, they'll be uh, dead or dormant and uh, prickly and just a hell to walk through. All right, one more plant before I go. This is one I was not expecting to find in this area here. I've seen it like once before, but I think there's a whole patch of them right here. And it's this sunflower looking guy All right, right here. This is Balsamariza macrophylla. They commonly called cut leaf balsam root for reasons that should be immediately obvious. It's got these leaves that are cut. Anyways, it's um yeah, it's like the only ever species of balsamariza you'll find in the area. So it's pretty cool for that. It's got a obviously very similar flower, and of course, uh, despite the fact that the leaves look very different from that of Sagittata, they um there are no leaves on the stem, or if they are, they are very heavily reduced and tiny, so that's how you tell but it is indeed part of that genera as opposed to part of Waifia, the only other one it really looks that similar to at all. Also, not sure what species exactly this is, but that's a species of Uriagan right there, a buckwheat member of the family Polygonaceae. I've seen that as well, although they're quite common. Yeah, it's got a whole meadow of these guys. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.